Hey, what's up guys? Uh, here I am doing another video. Um, today's topic, as you can see, uh, is kind of like a, a highly debated topic and it's a, it's a bit of a hot button kind of issue, uh, especially in today's kind of like political, social climate uh, just out there in America. A lot of people uh, talk about things related to today's topic. And so as you can see, uh, the title is Should Women Be Pastors? And so I got this idea to do this video because I had a bit of a conversation with some of our senior girls and I heard that they had a conversation also in their Bible study about whether or not women should be pastors and um, their teacher went over uh, the reasons uh, for, I guess, a biblical, a biblical stance on perhaps why women shouldn't be pastors. And so we're going we're gonna to dig into this. And uh, another reason why this topic is so important is because, well, we're living in a time when uh, there's a there's a really big narrative out there that you know women are not equal to men, or in terms of uh, jobs and roles, and is there a wage gap and things like that. This is a this is a very kind of contentious, highly debated, highly argued topic, and so. What I'm hoping to do today is to walk through some scripture with you, uh, as always, of course, and help you have some perspective on this. My charge to you is whatever position you take, whether or not you believe women should be pastors or should not be pastors, uh, you really need to go back to the scripture and be able to defend your position with the scripture. Because as Christians, if we can't use the scripture uh, as our, the basis for our argument, especially on a topic like this, uh, then I would say... Um, at that point, you're not really arguing as a Christian. You're just arguing as a person with an opinion. Um, but we, as Christians, we argue off the basis of God's truth. And so I'm going to walk through some scripture with you. The first scripture I want to walk through with you is from 1 Timothy chapter 2, uh, verse 11 through 15. This is overall the main passage when it comes to this topic. Uh, no matter which position you kind of fall on, this is the, the passage that we're all talking about. And so let me read this for us right now. Let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness. I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain silent or quiet. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. Yet she will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith and love and holiness with self-control. And so there's a lot to unpack there, but if I could just say it very simply, uh, the reason why women, according to Paul here, uh, should not act as a as an elder of the church is because it's a consequence of the fall and i would say you could even say that about why you know wives should submit to their husbands uh, within the home now, that's a whole nother topic and you know i could certainly get into that maybe at a future date like you know why should women submit in these two specific ways like submit in the church and then submit also in uh, the home i would say at least on the the church front though uh, many men also need to submit to the authority of those who are, are the pastors. And so in that way, um, men and, and women are pretty equal. Uh, it's just that only a man, a male, uh, could be a pastor. Now, I do want to quickly define uh, pastor in the Bible. And that's a really important piece to this, because when we understand what the role of pastor really is, according to the Bible, uh, that will help us to really understand this topic. And so to do that, I have a, another passage for us. It also comes from 1 Timothy, but now in chapter 3, uh, verse 1 through 7, which says, The saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own household well, with all dignity, keeping his children submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become puffed up with conceit and fall into the con condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders so that he may not fall into disgrace, into a snare of the devil. Uh, whoever this overseer is, or whoever would be an overseer or an elder or a pastor, this is, this is the same role that we're talking about here, uh, is male. He talks about this person as being a husband uh, with uh, of one wife, etc. And so uh, Paul goes on to describe the overseer as a, as a man. If there was some openness here that it could be male or female, then I think, I think that would also be clear in the passage. Now, there are some other scriptures where sometimes uh, there's gendered language used 
uh, when it is meant to apply to everyone. So Paul using gendered language here is actually significant. It's actually important uh, to say, well, this only applies then to men. So the first thing that Paul says here is that he says, let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness. Now, uh, again, like this, just if we had time, we, we could spend a lot of time on just like, what does that really mean to submit? But I'll just give you a really quick definition. Uh, to submit uh, is to submit to the authority of the elders at this church. So that, that's the context here anyway. There's also submissiveness in the home. That's a, it's a related but different topic. Um, and so Paul specifically is saying a woman should do this. Now, if, if this is kind of where the scripture would end, uh, then we can make a case, as, some, as many will do, that this is something that Paul was addressing in the church at Ephesus. Um, that the Christian women there were kind of rising up. Perhaps they were like just prophesying suddenly in the middle of the service and they were being disruptive. And so Paul is addressing some kind of uh, issue that just pertained to that church. Now, if this is all it said, but he doesn't stop there. So he continues on. He says, I don't, I don't permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority. And then he gives what I would say is kind of um, the most important piece to this whole thing. He says in verse 13, for Adam was formed first then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. Okay. Now what Paul is doing here is he's giving us an overarching biblical principle for his argument. If this was just a contained thing that's happening at this specific church, I don't think that Paul would tie this back to Adam and Eve. He'd have no reason to do that because again, this is just kind of a prescriptive thing, instruction that he's addressing for that specific church. But he ties back a greater biblical truth that Eve was the first one to be deceived. Um, and so therefore, this is why, at least in the church, uh, women cannot be pastors or elders or overseers. And that, that's all the same thing, okay? And so uh, what Paul is doing here is he's giving the basis for his argument and it's rooted in creation slash really the, the fall. It's a consequence of the fall. And so had the fall never happened, um, you could make a different argument like, well, maybe then women could have been pastors, but but then I'm not even sure if we would have had pastors because if the fall never happened, then there's no necessarily no reason to have uh, the capital C church as it exists right now, which is the church exists obviously to worship God, but the church exists to spread the gospel. If we're all not fallen, there's no reason to spread the gospel, right? And uh, it, there kind of isn't a gospel in the sense of Jesus hasn't had no reason to die and then and be raised again on the third day. Okay, so that's kind of besides the point. Uh, what I'm saying here is Paul is tying this back to a greater biblical truth that stems back uh, from what happened at the fall. And so it's a consequence of the fall. I did want to bring up, there's actually another handful of scriptures that people like to bring up uh, in this discussion. I'm not really going to discuss those because I'll just say overall, uh, any other scripture you bring up other than this one, um, it either will support what I've just shared uh, or it has nothing to do with that. Uh, for example, people like to bring up a particular figure uh, named Phoebe. And so they say, well, Phoebe was a deaconess. Uh, she had a, obviously she had a certain role within the church. Uh, I don't doubt that. And uh, that's not what we're discussing though, because what we're discussing is specifically the office of pastor slash overseer slash elder. Uh, a deacon is something different. And so there is some room there uh, to say that women could be deacons. But there is no such scripture that would give also room for women to be overseers or elders or pastors. So having said that, um, what is the role of a pastor then in the church? Uh, I would say according to the Bible, and there's a lot of different verses uh, you can use to look at this. So for example, 1 Timothy 5, 1 Peter 5, Titus 1. Uh, in these particular passages, what you come across is that elders are and really have two roles within the church. Uh, one is to help govern the church. So they are the authoritative figures in the church. And then secondly, they are to teach. Um, their teaching is also authoritative in the sense that it's not uh, more authoritative than the Bible, but it's authoritative because they're using the scripture. Uh, they're using the word of God to, to teach the church properly how to live as Christians. And so what would this mean in principle? This, in principle, this would mean that women are not to have that authoritative uh, role in the church uh, where they're they're making decisions for the entire church and they are not to teach in the worship service um, men specifically um, so having said that may, maybe because you're hearing me specify men uh, that may open the window to other things and i do think there's room there uh, i do think there's room to say of course um, women can be 
pastors or leaders or shepherds, whatever we want to call it. I think um, if we're being really biblical, we probably wouldn't call it pastor, but uh, I think in practice, that's what we call it. So women then could be uh, probably up to college level pastors because those are not yet um, men. And so that's the biblical scope of what we're talking about here. Um, now, of course, when you bring in like what that sounds like, it sounds like there's inequality. It sounds like there's something um, men are able to do that women are prohibited to do within the church. And I would say that's true. It's just, it is what it is. God has authority to, to do things as he sees fit. And this is the way he has structured the church. You know, I, I do think there's a lot of different reasons uh, that we could say for that, but I would say the ultimate reason is this is just God's decision. God's decision is that, well, I've, I only permit men to have that specific role within the church and women can serve in every other role within the church. I would say also on this topic, and it's, it's really tempting to do it, I understand, but you know, what is it about being a senior pastor or a lead pastor that is so desirable, right? Um, that role is a calling from God. And if God hasn't called a woman to do that role, I don't know that that's some kind of inequality. I don't know that that's something that we should feel sad about. Okay, and so to sum up, if I haven't convinced you, I think overall, as I said at the very beginning, whatever position you take, whether you, you believe it's totally fine for women to be senior pastors of a church or not, uh, you have to be able to support your position biblically. If you can't do that, I would say you're on extremely shaky ground because at that point, you're just, what are you using? You're just using your opinion. You're using kind of like uh, anecdotal evidence. Like, oh, I've seen that out there and it looked like it was really healthy and good. Um, I don't doubt that. I don't doubt that it may look that way, right? It may seem that way, but there's there's probably a lot that you don't know about uh, in, in any church that might be out there that's not obeying this command uh, that I would say probably isn't in effect. It's not working. It's not working to the degree that God has prescribed the church to be. And so uh, I hope this is helpful. I know this is not easy and this this is difficult, especially because of the way that we're conditioned to think from this culture and society. Uh, we're, we're conditioned to think this is some kind of injustice, this is some kind of inequality, it's not fair. Um, I really don't think it's that. I really do think that this is just a specific role given to men um, and it's only a few men. It's not like it's all men. Not every man can become a pastor. Uh, you have to be called, you have to be qualified. You should be, uh, someone who the church can ordain and affirm has this calling. And that's a very small percentage of the population. And so anyway, I hope this was helpful. If you have any comments, please leave it below. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you didn't like it. Um, but yeah, let me know how, what you think. And I'll see you in the next video. God bless you. Love you. Peace.